One of the best ways to really refine your ability to control a canoe is to work on something called the stationary pivot. That means the canoe is going to rotate 360 degrees while your body stays in one place. The canoe just works all the way around that. There's no drifting and it requires a lot of really precise control. When you can get it to the point where you have that completely under control, it's really easy to start to make maneuvers as you're moving along because you've got the basic mechanics down pat. Canoes generally uh, fall into two categories. The traditional ones are symmetrical and that means that they're shaped exactly the same front and back. The rocker is the same, sides of the boat the same, and it really doesn't matter which direction the canoe is pointing. Some of the more modern canoes are asymmetrical, that means the front is different than the back, and that's something that you have to be aware of. The other thing is that it's almost impossible to be at the exact turning point of the canoe, mostly because there's a yoke or a thwart there. That means your body will be a little bit forward or behind, depending on how you sit, uh, but it's going to introduce a little bit of drag at the back of the canoe, and uh, you do have to compensate for that. Uh, paddles. I like to think of paddle more like a musical instrument, guitar in my case. And you can play notes on a guitar down here, and you can play the same notes on a guitar up here. They are the same, but they sound different, and there's a different feeling to them. Paddle's the same way. You can hold it down here, and that gives you a certain amount of reach. Or you can slide your hand up here, and it gives you a lot more reach. Both of those relate to leverage. The uh, further down your hand is, the more leverage you've got on the paddle, the further up you actually get more leverage on the canoe. And that's because the paddle is further away from the turning point, the fulcrum, if you want to think of it as a lever. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is pitch control. And pitch is just the angle that you have the paddle to in relation to where you're moving it through the water. In order to make it neutral, it should be at 90 degrees. As soon as you put a little bit of angle or pitch to it, you're going to be introducing some forward or backward movement, and that will change things. That is an advantage when you're trying to fix some of the small problems that you'll run into because you can't trim the canoe perfectly neutral. It's going to want to spiral a bit instead of staying perfectly neutral. So once you get through the mechanics of it, you may have to introduce so a little bit of pitch to, to tweak things. I'm going to show you some stuff that's on dry land and it will give you the basic principles involved but when you put it in the water you're introducing a lot more variables and things change so you really have to get the feel for it because it is very subtle. Very small things can make big changes. Anyway, show you the rest of the stuff and it's on dry land but remember it's what you do on the water that really counts. In order to make the canoe go in a perfect circle, it's helpful if you can picture where the paddle has to go in order to apply forces. In order to make that circle, ideally what you'd like to be able to do is to put the paddle in in such a way that it describes a perfect arc. Now, we're drawing a circle in the sand to show you what should happen, but obviously you can't do that on the water. So, if you think about it, the paddle can be going through the water like that. And if you could do that, then the canoe would make a stationary pivot. It'll just spin around. If we look at it and try and analyze what's going on, here you're pushing the back of the canoe away from the paddle. Once you get to this point, you're starting to pull the front of the canoe towards the paddle. And on the other side of the canoe, when you apply force there, you're pushing the front of the canoe away from the paddle. And once the paddle gets to this point, you're starting to pull the back of the canoe towards the paddle. That would make you spin around in a perfect circle, but it's not practical. You're going to be paddling on the same side, so here are the two things that you can do. 
from the front, you can push the water away, or you can pull the water towards. That will move the front of the canoe left or right. Now, at the back of the canoe, pulling will draw the back of the canoe towards the paddle. Pushing will move the back of the canoe away from the paddle. So, how do you combine those things in a way that makes it do what you want to do? Here is the basic mechanics to it. The back of the canoe you push out, then the paddle slides, slices through the water neutral, pull towards, slides underneath, get to the back of the canoe and then push out again. When you're doing this on water, the canoe is going to move towards the paddle, so you have to end that stroke sooner. And at the back, you have to try and get it under the canoe. That's the slice recovery. And through the water. Now there's a bit of correction here, which you might need to do in order to prevent the canoe from spiraling. At the back there's a little bit of a push, and then once you get to the front there's a little bit of a pull, but the mechanics are there. Again, it's a matter of getting the feel for it. All that's going to be a little different when you're on the water. So, the video shows you how to do a stationary pivot, but the illustrations are all just on your paddling side. In other words, at the front of the canoe you're pulling and the bow moves towards your paddle, and at the back you're pushing and again the bow is moving in the same direction. If you want to go the other direction, it's just the reverse. Instead of pulling at the front, you'll be pushing, and at the back, instead of pushing, you'll be pulling. Works out just pretty much the same. But it does take a little bit of practice. It's easier to do it towards your paddling side to begin with and then work at doing the reverse, the mirror image, to go the other direction. The other thing to keep in mind is just what I mentioned about using that paddle like a musical instrument. Sliding your hand up and down, noticing how things change and where you get more reach and it helps on the canoe or less reach and it helps, gives you more leverage on the paddle. Experiment with it and you'll see that it will make a difference. Anyway, enjoy your time on the water and hope you nail that stationary pivot. Bye for now.